There's no denying that technology today plays a crucial role in the operation, delivery, quality and the engagement of financial services. Joining me today is Chris from Stockspot to talk about how innovation through technology can influence and improve businesses in wealth management. Welcome, Chris. Thanks, Christine. Maybe we can start with why you decided to launch Stockspot and how technology has helped bring this idea to life. Uh, Yeah, sure. I wanted to solve a few big problems I see with the wealth management industry in Australia. Uh, Namely, uh, first of all, most investment products that people can access are too expensive, and that's often reflected in poor performance. Um, And most of these products are actually the products that are recommended. So there's a big problem in the advice industry where a lot of the recommendations are actually into these high fee and low uh, performance products. Uh, So I wanted to help educate and and push consumers into better investment products. And to do that, I think uh, technology provides a great uh, equaliser in the industry, which allows people to um, access products uh, outside of traditional distribution. Earlier this year, Stockspot was selected as one of Asia's top 10 most innovative early stage financial technology companies to represent Australia at the Swift Inner Tribe Startup Challenge in Singapore. And the business also secured seed funding from AWI Ventures to support its growth strategy. Um, Congratulations on these achievements. Can you maybe tell us how technology will play a role in personal wealth management in the next five to 10 years? Uh, Yeah, sure. There's probably a few areas where technology is really going to drive change in the industry um, from what I see. Uh, One is in increased transparency. So I think uh, accessing information online is only going to improve uh, for people, especially in the financial services area. And this is going to uh, allow people to basically see where tangible benefit is added by the financial services industry and where it isn't added. And in areas where it's not added, it's going to give people opportunities to find better services uh, to suit their objectives without paying a lot of the costs that they would unnecessarily. Um, The second area that I'd say is it's going to open up access um, to more people for financial services. So through technology, it's going to lower the cost and the entry level for people to access good advice and um, investment services as well. Great. And... It seems like by the time a business or an institution has updated its technology, whether it be a system or platform, the rest of the world has already moved on to the next thing. So what are your thoughts on the pace at which the financial services industry is adopting technological change? Uh, I think overseas the change has been phenomenally fast over the last four or five years, especially in this personal finance and wealth management area. Uh, So there's plenty of examples of fantastic online businesses that have started in the US and the UK that basically empower people to make better investment decisions themselves and not necessarily need to go through the traditional financial advisors. Um, Unfortunately, I think the pace of change in Australia has been a lot slower so far. Uh, A lot of that's to do with the dominance of distribution in Australia. So it's very difficult to access these sort of services and even set up these sort of businesses. And that was one of our challenges, actually setting up a business to challenge the institution. Uh, But I think over time, um, with technology, uh, people will be enabled to access uh, more products and services. Is cost the key barrier to the adoption of better, faster technology? Or are there maybe other reasons for some of the hesitancy or indecision? Uh, For probably one of the first times in history, cost isn't one of the big barriers, uh, or at least it's becoming less of a barrier. So with cloud computing comes the ability to really uh, set up a fantastic business at a lot lower cost. And this has been one of the opportunities that I saw in setting up a financial service business because 10 or 20 years ago, in order to develop the back end that you'd need to support a business, uh, would have cost millions and millions of dollars and it would be very difficult to actually launch a you know, a, a basic product for people, whereas now technology actually enables that product to be launched um, in at least a simple format for people. So I don't think cost is really the barrier. I just think there's a big reluctance in a lot of the incumbents to basically look at new business processes um, when they're all stuck on their old uh, infrastructure and their old, own old processes. What about the constant regulatory change occurring in the industry? Do you think the lack of stability caused by FOFA has stalled the adoption of technology? Uh, ironically, I think if FOFA went through in its full form, it actually would have sped up a lot of the technology and a lot of the innovation that would have happened in the industry because it, it basically would have shifted the focus in the direction of uh, consumers' best interest. And I think that would have caused a lot of problems within the big organisations and ones that they could solve using technology. Unfortunately, I think a lot of the provisions that were unwound in FOFA will now slow a lot of the technology that could have happened. So because a lot of the larger organisations can now stick to the old processes that they were used to, um, they won't really need to innovate, or at least they probably won't innovate for a little while. Looking at exchange-traded funds now, they've clearly taken off in the Australian market and are expected to continue to grow strongly. 
But are there any new investments or channels that are potentially emerging as a rival to ETFs, um, ASX M Fund, for example? Uh, M Funds is just a great example of another way that consumers can access um, professional investment products outside of traditional distribution. Uh, so my perspective is M Funds is another great way for consumers to actually um, access managed funds, just like ETFs are a great way for consumers to access index funds. Um, unfortunately, there's not a lot of support from the bigger organisations because they're all trying to own their ecosystems, uh, which are their wrap platforms and their distribution through financial advisors. So outside of a few small independents, there isn't yet a lot of uh, widespread support for these new distribution mechanisms because they uh, contradict a lot of the ways that things have been done in the past and a lot of the profit pools within these banks. So I think it does provide a great opportunity and that's what we're trying to leverage technology to actually offer these uh, products through to consumers in a, in a really simple and easy to use fashion. In light of their popularity, are investors searching for ways to compare ETFs and how would you rate what's currently out in the marketplace? Uh, well, not just ETFs, but I think generally investor education um, is something that's lacking a little bit in Australia and there's plenty of opportunity to improve people's understanding of investing. Um, outside of traditional newsletters and stock tipping, um, yeah, newsletter type subscription services, I think uh, generally people's understanding of investing is, is un unfortunately a long way behind the rest of the world and that probably is one of the reasons why most Australians still um, invest in active funds for instance. So I think 94% of money invested in Australia is in active funds even though all academic and empirical research shows that it's a zero-sum game and people are losing out. Whereas in Europe and the US that's shifted a long way over the last 10 years and now there's more like 20 or 25% invested in passive funds because people realise that um, for long-term wealth accumulation, that for most cases, that's, it's a better solution for them. Uh, generally, I'd say there's a big opportunity for improvement in investor education in Australia. So not only in comparative services, but just generally understanding the benefits and, and disadvantages of different types of investments. Uh, I'll give a good example of passive investments. So I think there's a big lack of understanding of the benefits for long-term wealth accumulation of passive investing. Uh, a lot of that education has already happened overseas, and that's why there's been a big shift out of active funds into passive funds uh, in the US, for instance. Uh, however, in Australia, still 94% of all money is actively managed, whereas that's moving towards 80 and, and 75% overseas. So education does need to improve. I think one way of improving that education piece is actually by providing uh, your better education tools and comparison tools online. Um, so you make the point of ETF comparison tools. I think that's a good example because we saw there was an opportunity to provide more information to consumers about ETFs. Uh, there is good information on the ASX website. There's good information on the ETF manufacturers' websites, but unfortunately they, they have a bit of an issue in that they can't really compare their ETFs to their other issuers because they don't want to step on anyone's toes. Um, equally, there's the ratings agencies and the ratings businesses that do provide some information, um, but unfortunately all of that information is either behind paywalls because they try and charge for it, or where it's not behind paywalls, it's because the funds have actually asked the ratings agencies to come in and rate their funds, which is a conflict in itself. Um, and yeah, that's why we've basically launched an ETF comparison tool on our website, which helps people compare the different ETFs and the different asset classes and select the right one for them. The industry is now focusing on 2015. Could you share some of what Stockspot is planning for the coming 12 months? Uh, sure. So our vision is basically to help people uh, make better investment decisions. So to empower just general consumers out there to invest better. Uh, so over 2015, we're going to continue to push forward on different initiatives uh, to provide consumers with different products, services and tools to do that. Great. Well, we'll be sure to keep an eye out. Thank you for joining us, Chris. Thanks for having me on the show.